Welcome to this video on variance of the power method. So we have already studied the power method and also how fast it converges. And what we have seen is that the power method, either scaled or unscaled, um, will converge. Well, the Rayleigh quotients will converge to the dominant eigenvalue and the vectors will converge to the eigenvector corresponding to lambda one, the dominant eigenvalue. What I will try to um, study in this video is some variants of the power method. So first of all, we will do a shift, which basically shifts all the eigenvalues along the real axis, either to the left or to the right. And then we will also do the power method on the inverse matrix. And then if you combine these two, so you do inverse iteration, which is basically the power method on the inverse matrix, plus a shift, that will give us a means to find any of the eigenvalues of a matrix. So let's look at a little um, inventory of what we will study in this presentation. So we will look at the power method with shift, that's just moving the eigenvalues along the real axis. Then at inverse iteration, the power method on the inverse matrix, we will combine them and I will give a short overview of all the versions of the power method that we have seen by then. So the first idea is power method with shift. And what we would like to do is speed up convergence if possible. Now, we can do the following observation. If you have an eigenvalue lambda and the eigenvector u, so a u equals lambda u, then if you would look at a minus sigma times the identity applied to u, you see that you get lambda minus sigma times the identity times u. So what you see here is that if we define this as the matrix B, so A minus sigma times the identity, I call that B, you see that it has the same eigenvectors as the original matrix, but I've shifted, I've moved all the eigenvalues by sigma. So this matrix B here has now the eigenvalues mu k, which are lambda k minus sigma. So what I could do is use the power method on this B matrix. And since the eigenvalues are shifted, it can influence the convergence, the speed of convergence of the power method. So the power method to shift is just use the power method on this B matrix. The problem that we are confronted with now is how should we choose this shift? So sigma is just a number, but how should we choose this number to have faster convergence? So to, to present the idea, I'm going to assume that lambda 1 is really bigger than lambda 2. So that makes sense because then we know that the power method converges. But I'm going to assume that they are ordered and all of them are bigger or equal 0. So basically what we have is we have 0 somewhere and then we have all of the eigenvalues starting with lambda 1 and up to lambda 1. And lambda 1 is the dominant one that's the biggest. Now, if you shift them by an amount sigma, then basically what you're doing is, is you're moving them along the horizontal axis, or you could say that you move zero, you move that to sigma. So if you want that mu one is still the largest, the dominant eigenvalue, so one of these two, one of lambda n or lambda one could become the dominant eigenvalue, if you shift far away, then lambda 1 will be the smallest and lambda n will become the biggest one. But if we say that we still want lambda 1 or the corresponding mu 1 to be the dominant eigenvalue, then you need to choose sigma to the left of the average of lambda 1 plus lambda n. If you still want mu 2 to correspond to lambda 2, so the next largest, then you should choose sigma less or equal lambda 2 plus lambda n over 2. Now, and you can prove that you can make the new convergence factor. So we have seen that if you do the power method, it will depend on the quotient between mu2 and mu1. If you want to have that minimal, with the two conditions I just sketched, that mu1 is dominant, mu2 is the second one, then you should pick sigma equal to this value. So that's optimal in that sense. Now, 
That is, of course, a theoretical choice because we don't know lambda 2 and we don't know lambda n. So maybe you have some guesses for them. Maybe they are unknown. Um, you can take a different shift in every step of your iteration. So if you're also computing approximations of these, maybe you can update also your shift value. As I said, we are going to combine this in a second. So this is not the, the end of, of the power method yet. First, let's look at the inverse iteration. So let's assume that our matrix is non-singular. So all the eigenvalues are unequal to zero. Let lambda be an eigenvalue with eigenvector u. And well, a is non-singular, so that means that lambda is unequal to zero. Now, if you look at a u equals lambda u, that just says that u is eigenvector with eigenvalue lambda. If you apply a inverse to both sides of the equation, then you find with a little rewriting that a inverse applied to u is one over lambda times u. So apparently u is also an eigenvector of a inverse and the eigenvalue is flipped upside down. So b equals a inverse here has the same eigenvectors, but the eigenvalues, I call them u k again, are one over lambda k. Now, if you apply the power method on b, you will find mu n because lambda n is smallest. So mu n, one over lambda n, then becomes the dominant eigenvalue. And the convergence factor will then be mu n minus one over mu n, which will be lambda n over lambda n minus one. So inverse iteration, that's just the name for applying the power method on a inverse. Now I'm going to combine these two ideas. I'm going to do both inverse iteration and I'm going to apply a shift here. So that basically is the power method on the matrix A minus sigma times the identity inverse. Now A minus sigma identity inverse has the same eigenvectors but the eigenvalues are one over lambda k minus sigma. Now, by choosing different values for sigma, you can make any of the eigenvalues dominant. So you can make any one over lambda k minus sigma dominant. If you choose sigma very close to lambda k, then one over lambda k minus sigma is going to be a very big number, so that eigenvalue is going to be dominant. And the convergence factor, well, if you have some mu l and mu k, it's going to be this number here. We don't know precisely which one it is, depends on your choice of sigma. In theory, you would have one step convergence if you would pick the shift equal to lambda k, because then we will find a, a zero here, and you would have one step convergence. So it makes sense to pick the current approximation for lambda k as a shift. Hopefully that will speed up convergence. We're trying to locate lambda k, so we find a better and better approximation. And if we then use this as a shift, we will have very fast convergence. One thing for efficiency, we are going to apply, um, well, the power method. So we have to do xi plus one is a minus sigma times the identity inverse times xi. The way we do that is by solving a linear system. So we're solving the linear system a minus sigma times the identity xi plus one equals xi. If you change sigma all the time, which is fastest for convergence, if you look at this convergence factor, then you have to do the LU factorization every time anew. If you keep sigma fixed for a number of iteration steps, you can keep, you can store the LU decomposition. So there is a trade-off here in efficiency and speed of convergence. So let's see how this works. So we have the same matrix as before. I'm going to start with a shift of 14. I compute the LU factorization using MATLAB. And then here I use the LU factorization to well, basically solve the linear system. So here I'm basically saying that um, 
a minus sigma identity y equals z. So I'm, I'm solving this. So I'm doing y is a minus sigma identity backslash z using MATLAB notation. And since I've already computed u and l, I use those and I don't have to compute them again. So maybe you already know them by now, but these are the eigenvalues of the matrix. If you use, for instance, the EIG command in MATLAB. And now if you would choose sigma equal to zero, so no shift, you will find the smallest eigenvalue of the original matrix. So indeed minus 0 0.3354. If you pick sigma equal one, which is closer to the second one, you find indeed the second of the eigen, well, second from the right of the eigenvalues of your matrix. Sigma equals four gives this eigenvalue. Sigma equals 10 gives this eigenvalue here. And then finally, if you would take sigma equal to 15, you find lambda one, the dominant eigenvalue of the original matrix. So you see that indeed by choosing um, a suitable sigma value, you can find any of the eigenvalues of the original matrix. So just to wrap up a little summary of all the different versions of the power method that we have studied so far. So I have a square matrix. It has n eigenvalues. The first one, lambda one, is really bigger in absolute value than the rest. Corresponding eigenvectors are these u's here. Then we have seen the power method with the scaling in there. So the Rayleigh quotients converge to lambda one Convergence factor is lambda 2 over lambda 1. And for a symmetric matrix, you have faster convergence and you have lambda 2 over lambda 1 squared as a convergence factor. Then you can do shift. And by making a smart choice, you can either reduce the convergence factor, so you have faster convergence, or you could even make mu n is lambda n minus sigma dominant, so you can find the two extreme eigenvalues now of the original matrix, lambda one or lambda n, the biggest and the smallest. With inverse iteration, so power method on the inverse matrix, you would find one over lambda n. And if you combine those two ideas, so if you do inverse iteration with shift, you can make any of the eigenvalues lambda k of the matrix A dominant because the new matrix has these eigenvalues and if sigma is close to lambda k, you will find lambda k with the power method. So in summary, we have seen how you can use a shift to speed up convergence and how you can use inverse iteration with shift to find any of the eigenvalues of a matrix. That wraps up this video and our discussion on the power method for now. I hope this was all clear and I'll see you in the next video.